Hey, I'm Dr. Yost and I'm a physician. And today in this session, we're gonna talk a little bit about the human body. And the human body is a pretty amazing thing. It goes through a lot of really interesting changes as you grow and develop. So we're gonna start really by talking about some of that stuff. So firstly, we're gonna talk about anatomy, specifically anatomy of our reproductive health systems. And it's important when we talk about this to know the correct medical terms. Um, a lot of times when I talk with patients, they'll refer to different parts of their body in slang. And although that's okay and I know what they're talking about, I often wonder, do they know the, the proper names for things? So it's important to kind of know these medical terms. And I would encourage you to use these medical terms when you interact with your healthcare provider and when we interact during the telehealth session. In regards to anatomy, I also want you to know that there is a very wide range of what is normal. So not one person looks exactly alike, and that's what makes us all special and unique. The second thing we're gonna talk about is physiology. Now physiology is just a fancy word for how my body works. And in specifically with physiology, we're gonna talk about the menstrual cycle, meaning girls' periods. And yes, guys, you need to know about that too. We're also gonna talk about the physiology of reproduction, meaning the pathway from the sperm to the egg. And when we talk about these topics, this brings up a discussion of reducing your risk for, for pregnancy. Um, throughout Teen Talk, we are gonna consistently talk about, talk about decreasing your risk of having an unplanned pregnancy and decreasing your risk of getting an infection. And the best way to know how to protect yourself is to actually know how your body works in the first place. The last thing we're gonna talk about is sexuality. Um, it's important to know that we're all sexual beings. We all have sexual feelings. It's a very um, normal part of being human. But it's also important to know the difference between gender identity, who I am, gender expression, how I express myself, and sexual orientation, who I'm attracted to. And it's also important to appreciate the differences in other people around you. Throughout Teen Talk, if you have a question, please um, don't be afraid to ask that. Um, it's also okay, okay to keep your personal opinions and experiences private if that is more comfortable for you. Any question is okay. We're all here to learn, but if you have a question you don't feel comfortable asking, use the anonymous question link on the website homepage and we'll answer it for you confidentially. Thanks and enjoy the session. Hey, it's Dr. Ghost. Let's talk a little bit now about um, sexuality, including gender identity and sexual orientation. So this includes people who are gay, straight, bisexual, and transgender. You may have heard the term LGBT before, and from now on, that's what we're going to use to refer to lesbian, bisexual, gay, and transgender. Um, we're gonna start by talking about some of those terms and also talk a little bit about discrimination and what you can do to stand up against it. Throughout Teen Talk, we talk a lot about sensitive topics. We just got done talking about anatomy and physiology of reproduction, and that can be sometimes hard to talk about. Sexuality is absolutely a sensitive topic, and it may have a very personal meaning to many students in your student body. Undoubtedly, there are a lot of students at your school who are gay or bisexual or even transgender. And chances are, a lot of students will have friends or family members who are LGB or T. There are also probably many students who have been um, teased or made fun of, um, both gay and straight, for either being too masculine or too feminine. We at Teen Talk really try to take that into consideration and try to, uh, try to respect other people's feelings as we came up with our curriculum, and we expect you to do the same. As with any of these topics, there's gonna be a lot of differing opinions. Some people don't agree with homosexuality. Some people really don't think it's any different from being heterosexual. Some people don't believe in birth control. Some people don't believe in sex before marriage. I could go on and on. The point of Teen Talk is really to give factual information from a medical standpoint. Um, and as always, um, respect for other people's opinions is gonna be important now and for the rest of your life. Hi, I'm Brian Dunlap and I'm a pediatrician. In this module, we'll talk about relationships and specifically romantic relationships. 
Throughout your lifetime, you'll probably be involved in several different romantic relationships. Hopefully these will be healthy relationships where both individuals feel respected and feel that they can be who they want to be. There's always a chance that you could be involved in an unhealthy relationship, which is where both people would be unhappy. More often than not, uh, this can be due to a lack of respect or a lack of communication. The most worrisome or most dangerous unhealthy relationships are when there is abuse involved. This could be emotional abuse, where there would be verbal put-downs or threats. This could be physical abuse. There could be some sort of controlling behavior. There also could be sexual abuse involved. None of these things are okay. I understand that this is a sensitive issue. Someone in your classroom, or maybe even you, may be in an unhealthy relationship. So it's always important to be sensitive to those around you. As a reminder, throughout this session, and whenever you meet in person, it's okay to keep your opinions and your experiences to yourself. But again, please be respectful of those opinions around you. Asking any questions are fine. We're here to learn. But if anybody has any questions that you are uncomfortable asking, please use the anonymous question link on the website homepage. Thanks and enjoy the session. Hi everybody, my name is Professor Ramsey and I work in the College of Education and Professional Development here at Marshall University. And today in this session we're going to talk a little bit about communication. And so just take a couple seconds and think to yourself, what does communication mean to me? because communication can mean different things to different people. Um, a lot of times if you go out to restaurants, you will see two people sitting at a table together eating dinner, but they're texting. Are they texting each other? Probably not, <laughs> or they would just speak. So the two things that we're gonna talk about today when it comes to communication is listening and speaking, those two things. And it is important to understand the power of listening and speaking, especially when a friend may come to you that has been in a difficult situation or even a harmful situation with their boyfriend, girlfriend, partner, significant other. So we're gonna go through some things that you may wanna consider if someone comes to you who has been in a hurtful or damaging situation. And the first one is to listen. The power of listening cannot be underestimated. Providing that shoulder for someone to cry on, maybe literally or figuratively, is really important to just listen and show that person who has come to you that you care. The second thing that you want to do is to show your support. And you don't have to do anything grand, um, just maybe hugging or patting on the hand or you know, providing a tissue if necessary is really important to show your friend that you're there to provide them with support. The next thing that you really want to do is make sure that they understand that you believe them. If someone has come to you and they are saying that there's something that has happened to them that is of tragic nature, you, you know, you need to believe them and not think that maybe they're just making it up. Because more times than not, this is not something that someone has made up. The next thing that you really want to do is to reassure your friend that they are not to blame. Victims are never to blame. If, they are, if they've been put in this situation, it is not their fault. And make sure that you tell them that. It's not your fault. It is the person who has harmed you. It's their fault, not yours. And lastly, you wanna make sure that you respect your friend's privacy. Um, the next step as to who they need to tell, maybe you can help them. Um, tell a parent or guardian, trusted adult, clergy member, minister, priest, guidance counselor, or even maybe their physician. Um, but what we don't want to do is to spread it around to other friends without their consent. So make sure that you know you keep what your friend says to you private. And so those are things that you can do to help someone who's been in a hurtful situation. We're now going to talk about some communication strategies when you need to communicate to your boyfriend or girlfriend or even just a friend when there's been something that has happened that you're not okay with. Or maybe you need to talk to them about a situation that may be coming up. 
um, and just your general feelings. So maybe if you're breaking up with someone or maybe if they said something hurtful to you and you've decided that you want to communicate with them your feelings, here are some things that you can do. So the first thing is to realize the power of your voice. How many times have you ever been talking to a friend and you thought, gosh, why are they talking to me that way? Why are they being so loud? Um, why are they being so brusque? Um, the way that we say things and the enunciation of our words and how we speak can really make a difference. So really watch the tone of your voice. Um, the next thing is to know your intent. So when you go to this person, whomever it may be, and you start speaking with them, what do you one out of it. Know your boundaries, know your goals of that communication. Also, your body language. Um, so make sure that you uh, are feeling comfortable. Make sure that you're not doing something like standing with your arms crossed um, or, you know, fidgeting or biting on that nail that you always go to that's sort of, you know, what you do when you're nervous. Make sure that you know you feel comfortable, that you feel confident in what you're going to say, and really pay attention to your body language. So next up is timing. So when you think about you know, having this conversation that is important to you, make sure that your timing is good. Um, make sure that you have enough time to really sit down and have a productive conversation with that person and, you know, that you're not catching them right as they're going to work or on the way to class where maybe two or three things are said and then you can't fully discuss, you know, what your topic of conversation is your approach um, so you might not know what this means but when we say the word approach we're thinking about how you're really going to um, broach the subject with your you know with your partner or significant other other and make sure that you do it with you know kindness and and with you know full um, consideration of the topic and their feelings as well and finally be clear Whatever it is that you want, be clear about it. Um, make sure that you have it outlined in your head what you would like to say and know that you don't have to um, you know, take anything um, from someone else that you don't want to, that you deserve respect and as well as they do, but make sure that you, know, you get what you want out of the conversation. Hey everybody, this is Professor Ramsey and today we're going to talk about sexually transmitted diseases or STDs. A sexually transmitted disease can be bacterial or viral and they are transmitted through sexual activities and behaviors and even skin to skin contact. You may be wondering why we're going to talk to you about this and that's because there are 19 million new STDs that are diagnosed each year. And more than half of those are diagnosed in the population of young adults ages 15 to 24. That seems sort of staggering to think that there are more than half of the diagnoses that are you know, in that age range, in your age range, but that is because young adults often do not get screened regularly and they, also, they often change partners and they often don't know how to protect themselves. So those are all the things that we're gonna talk about today. Remember that STD screening is confidential. And so you can go to your primary care provider, your physician, and you can get screened and it will be confidential, only you and they will know about it. You can also talk to your primary care provider, your physician, about ways to protect yourself and condom usage and the importance of that. So just remember that your sexual health and well-being is important, that you need to take care of yourself, and that there are people that can help you do that, such as your primary care provider, your physician. Hi, I'm Dr. Shannon smith Maxey, and I'm a pediatrician. In this session, we're gonna discuss birth control and abstinence. As discussed in previous sessions, abstinence is simply not having sex. People choose abstinence for many reasons, including religious and personal beliefs, as well as they're just not ready. 
Other people want to prevent any chance of becoming pregnant, as well as risking being exposed to a sexually transmitted infection. These are all good reasons. Regardless of your reason, it's up to you to choose when you're ready to become sexually active. Birth control is an important topic, whether you're having sex or not. In this session, we are going to discuss all the different types of birth control out there, as well as their effectiveness against preventing pregnancy. Birth control also has other benefits besides preventing pregnancy, such as improved lifestyle and reduced periods. Some girls choose to be on birth control even if they're not having sex because it stops painful heavy periods and improves their lifestyle. Lastly, birth control is not just for girls. Guys absolutely need to know about birth control and be open to discussing it with their partners when they choose to become sexually active. Both partners are responsible for understanding and using birth control.